What's up everybody, Steven here with Neural DSP. And today I have part two on a video series I'm doing on compressors. I'm gonna go over the main types of compressors, the differences between them, and a couple of typical situations that you would find use for them. Now let me say at the outset, however, that these are just suggestions. There really are no rules in audio. Be creative, be adventurous, press all the buttons to try and see if you can come up with something outside the box that's just as awesome. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So the first type of compressor I'm gonna go over is the VCA or voltage controlled amplifier. A few examples would be the SSL compressors, the API 2500, and the Shadow Hills mastering compressor. This type of compressor can be used in a ton of different scenarios, but is generally favored for mix bus compression, mainly because its design allows for a lot of control, a wide range of response times, and is fairly transparent compared to other styles of compressors that color the sound. So for this example, I'm using the Waves SSL Comp. I don't have anything on my two bus aside from this plugin. Basically what I'm using this plugin to do is to tame down those peaks of the snare and the kick because they're poking out just a little bit too hard from the mix right now. This is what it sounds like with the compressor off. And now the plugin on. So in addition, you can hear that the SSL compressor is bringing down the kick and the snare, but it's also kind of gluing the rest of the track together. For another example of an SSL compressor at work, I've put the SSL channel on the lead guitar's bus. So if I'm sent a lead guitar track that I have no control over the dynamics or the effects, I'm gonna use the compression to kind of bring out some of the background elements like the delay and the reverb. The next style of compressor is the FET or Field Effect Transistor Compressor. These compressors are capable of ultra fast attack and release times and are great workhorse compressors. You can use them in almost any situation, but they do color the sound of your audio, so this may or may not be a desired outcome depending on your vision for your mix. So the FET compressors are great on everything. So here's an 1176 on the drum bus. And I used a little bit more of an extreme setting on this plugin just so you could hear the effects of the compressor. So this is an example of using a FET compressor in parallel with a kick drum microphone. And generally you're going to want to use this setting for reinforcing the audio of your kick. For something like this you're trying to give it more punch and more impact. So you can see in the gain reduction that this is reducing the signal considerably simply because I don't want it to really poke through in the mix. I just want it to reinforce what's already there. The next type of compressor is the optical compressor. These compressors are probably the most interesting in build to me than the others. And this is the one exception where I kind of want to tell you how it works just so you understand how it reacts to the audio. Rather than relying on an electrical signal, this compressor relies on a light source for its compression levels. The audio signal is fed to a light source, such as an LED. From there, a light-sensitive transistor reacts to the light coming from the LED. This then informs the compressor how fast and how much to reduce the audio. 
And here's the reason why I want you to understand this. The attack and release times of an optical circuit, at least most of the time, is not linear. This involves a bit of delay before the attack sets in and some additional delay before the release drops off. This can result in really musical results if you use it on bass, vocals, and guitar. But this also means that optical compressors generally don't fare so well on transient heavy materials where you're trying to catch that initial attack. For instance, your kick, snare, and drum shells. So here's an example of a classic optical compressor. This is the CLA-2A, and I'm using this to compress the DI before going into the parallax. You can hear the CLA-2A really kind of taming down those attacks before they hit the parallax. So for this example, I'm using the CLA-2A to smooth out the vocals on this track. I have my main lead vocal down the center and a left and a right vocal as well. So this is the song that I actually wrote before coming to work for Neural DSP. I bought Thornton the other day. Don't blow your mind. I bought Thornton the other day. Don't blow your mind. So you can hear that the tone to blow your mind is very, very dynamic. The two is much softer than the others. But once I turn on the compressor, that becomes much more consistent. Don't blow your mind. Don't blow your mind. Don't blow your mind. Don't blow your mind. But the compressor is still very bouncy, it's still very musical, and it still allows the vocals to feel like vocals, and it doesn't really crush it like some others do. The last example is the variable mu. Now the name variable mu actually relates to the exact way that this compressor functions. They lack traditional threshold and ratio, but rely on the input and output to drive the compressor. A few examples of variable mu compressors would be the Manly Varimu and the Fairchild 660. Here is an example of the variable Mu compressor on the mix bus. So you can hear that the characteristic of this is very, very different when compared to the VCA in the SSL Comp plugin. To me, the SSL is very clear, whereas the Puig Child is very warm in comparison. Comparing the two, I actually kind of like the Puig Child on the second half of the section better than the first. 
I like the clarity of the SSL, but I think that warmth that the Puig Child brought out kind of helped the mix glue together a little bit better. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload our videos. Comment down below, let me know what you think of this video, and if there's any specific situations you'd like to see me cover in future compression videos. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.